Hello, my name is Dr. Anita Muhumuza. I am a pediatrician and a neonatology fellow. I work at the Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. Hi, my name is Claire Anjisiwe. I'm a nurse. I work at uh, Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Uh, so today we are going to be demonstrating how to assemble a a bubble CPAP for low resource settings or for like lower health facilities which may not have the modern CPAP equipment. So this is a, a simple a simple mechanism, a simple CPAP, which can be used to support these babies even before they are referred to the higher facilities for to improve their respiratory function. So first in definition, what is a CPAP? So CPAP uh, in full is a continuous positive airway pressure. So as the definition goes, we aim to achieve a positive pressure within the lungs. So we achieve this by setting a constant pressure, which we call a PEEP, the positive end expiratory pressure, which we set at a marked point, depending on how the baby is clinically. Uh, and this is what will determine the continuous flow in the continuous respiratory cycle. We have a positive pressure maintained in the lungs so that the baby is able to breathe without using a lot of effort. So, what are the indications? Indications of putting the baby on CPAP. So, we know most of our newborn babies are going to have breathing problems or respiratory problems. And this is why commonly most of them need to be admitted in the nurseries or in the newborn units. Uh, this is most common, especially for the preterm babies. So, a CPAP is one of the ways oxygen delivery mechanisms or respiratory support systems which will help newborn babies that have breathing challenges. They may have difficulty in breathing, they may have very fast breathing, or some of them may have um, low oxygen saturation levels, even on normal oxygen flow. This is where we use a CPAP. We can do a bubble CPAP. There are also electric CPAPs, but today we are going to talk about a just a simple improvised bubble CPAP for the lower health facilities or low resource settings, which can be used as they also aim to get the modern CPAP equipment. These are commonly available materials in all health facilities, and we can use this to actually assemble a, a local CPAP, a, an improvised CPAP. Uh, most of our babies, especially all preterm babies, it is recommended immediately they are born, they should be put on a CPAP. This will help to keep their lungs open so that the alveoli does not collapse when they breathe out. So as soon as they are born, they should be put on a CPAP. Even during transportation to the higher facilities when they are being referred, they should be transferred on a CPAP. Even full-term babies who have difficulty in breathing can be put on the CPAP even as they are being transferred to the next level of care. So let's get down to what we need and how we make the CPAP. Thank you. So uh, let me take you through the equipment. The equipment we need for this uh, bubble CPAP is uh, a 10 ml syringe or a 20 ml syringe, whichever is available, a disposable effusion set, then uh, a sterile bottle or normal saline bottle with distilled water. Then we have a transparent tape or any other plaster can work. Then we have the surgical blade that we shall use for cutting, and then the tape measure. In case you don't have a tape measure, you can get a ruler and uh, measure your centimeters on a paper, which we use to attach on the bottle. And then we have the nasal oxygen cannula that we shall use as well. We have our baby for demonstrating, and then definitely we need the oxygen source. You cut on the uh, top of the bottle to create space for the syringe and the bottle and the tube. This is what I did first. And then we remove the needle. And cut right after the white. This 
So this works as a connector to allow the oxygen cannula to go inside, connect with this. And then we shall also not need this, so we cut it off. So you remain with these parts. And then for this nasal oxygen cannula, we cut right here. So we are going to tie this end so that we do not have any air leakage. And then we shall connect this end to here, to the orange one. You ensure it's tight. Okay. So we shall have this oxygen cannula coming from the oxygen source. Then going to the baby first. We shall put up there. And then this end of the tube, we shall put it in the water. So with our tape measure, we need uh, centimeters from zero to 10. And then we shall use our transparent plaster to secure it. From uh, 0 to 10, and 10 is at the bottom, as you can see. And then we shall pour water up to the zero mark. So we now have our distilled water at the zero mark in our bottle. So we've already connected, and uh, this X the extreme end of the tube, we are going to dip it in the water up to the pip that we need. For this case, we need a pip of five. Put in this bottle of water that has distilled water up to the five centimeters mark. For the case of our baby, we are set it at five because that's the minimum pip that we need to be maintained in the alveoli. But for other babies, they might need or require a higher pip. So we secure it, this tube, with our syringe. Uh, another thing to note is to make sure that tube is not compressed so much. So make sure that syringe is loose and you ensure it's at five centimeters mark. So our system is complete. We are now going to first check before we connect it to the baby. So how do you check? You occlude on the prongs and then you switch on your oxygen to five. five liters per minute. So we now have our bubbles, as you can see. So that means our system is working. And then you connect it to the baby. So this, this is how you know that your bubble CPAP is working. You should be having, uh, then the prongs should be fitting, just snugging the baby's nostrils not too tight and not too loose, and you should have uh, bubbles as you can see. So this shows that your system is working. So what we are doing now, we are providing uh, the PEEP that you talked about, the positive and expiratory pressure. We have set it at five for this baby. This is a full-term baby. If this was a preterm, maybe we would need a PEEP of like six or seven. So this helps to keep a positive pressure in the alveoli. So that even as baby breathes in and out, the alveoli remain wide open for gas exchange to happen or for air exchange to happen. And this helps babies who have respiratory distress uh, so that they do not keep on breathing, using a lot of effort to breathe in and out because they can tire out and get respiratory failure. So this is what our bubble CPAP is helping us to help the baby reduce on the effort they have to use to get in another breath on every cycle. So we have set a peep of five centimeters of water, as you can see. Because this is the pressure we need. This was a full-term baby. Most full-term babies will need a peep of about five centimeters. But for preterm babies, because they have uh, their lungs are more stiff, they have less surfactant in their lungs since they are born prematurely, they are going to need higher peeps. 
where we shall need like six or seven for the preterm babies. So, but even for term babies, in case they are not getting better, you can increase the PIP by pushing your tube a little lower for every centimeter that you need. So we started from five. If the baby is not improving, we can increase the PIP maybe to six. Even for some preterms, we can maybe start from six or seven. As they get better, we keep on reducing the PIP as they are improving. So this can be adjusted by adjusting the length of the tube in the water. So that adjusts the PIP that we are giving. So CPAP is also related with some complications that we are going to hear about. Some of the commonest complications a baby might present with while on CPAP are uh, nasal septum trauma, which uh, is caused by tight nasal prongs. So we need to ensure that we get the right size of the prongs for the baby. There are different sizes for preterm babies and term babies. Another complication is the distended abdomen which is caused by air leakage to the abdomen. So how do we prevent that is to ensure that we pass the NG tube, nasogastric tube, uh, once the baby is on CPAP and the uh, orogastric tube. So what we looked at was uh, an improvised bubble CPAP for the very low resource settings. However, we have this uh, bubble CPAP kit, uh, which can actually, which is affordable and can actually be used in most of our facilities if we can procure some. So you see it has this bubble CPAP generator. Uh, it has a humidifier bottle and it also connects the oxygen source and the same nasal prongs to the baby. So this is a simple circuit, CPAP circuit that can actually be used. And it also can be provided with a warming, with a heater, which can actually give the baby warm, humidified air to prevent some of the complications. So aside from the improvised CPAP, we can also have this... Uh, bubble CPAP procured for our units, for some of our facilities, which you can actually use to help most of our babies. We are struggling with high neonatal mortalities, but we also know most of our admissions are due to breathing complications. So if we are to reduce our neonatal mortality, we need to look into these life-saving commodities like bubble CPAPs, most especially with an increasing number of preterm babies. Oh, this is a must-have in almost all our facilities where babies are born. Thank you. In the event that the baby needs to be transferred to a higher facility for advanced care, ensure that this baby is transported on the CPAP that is either improvised or if you have this one in your health center, please ensure that the baby is transported while on CPAP and uh, provide warmth. If the mother is able to do kangaroo, ensure that the baby moves in a kangaroo uh, mother care while on CPAP and also ensure that the baby's uh, bed sheets are dry. Thank you.